Hello and welcome to the E-Crystal Palace podcast. I'm Fonsa Greenborough and in today's podcast, I'll be looking over the game against Watford to bring you my match review player rankings and my man of the match. As well as this, I'm also going to bring you interviews with Roy Hodgson, Gary Cahill and Jara Riederwald after the game. So let's begin. A resolute Palace fought with Watford in a hotly contested draw just outside of London, with neither Roy Hodgson or Hayden Millen's side able to find the breakthrough. A managerial change in a week, with a former Crystal Palace player in the dugout in Hayden Millen's, Watford welcomed the Eagles to Rickeridge Road in a buoyant mood as they looked for their first home win of the season. The opening exchanges were dominated by the Hornets, with Saul causing a series of problems for the Eagles down Watford's right-hand side. Firstly, a miscued header from James Tonkin saw Saul get in and win a corner that resulted in nothing. Saar got in a couple more times down Palace's left, however, Slup marshalled the situation well to force poor final balls from the Hornets' club record signing. On 9 minutes, it was Roy Hodgson's side who had the best chance of the game so far, despite Watford's pressure, when a deflected Andrews Townsend cross found MacArthur unmarked at the back post. However, the midfielder couldn't find the target with his controlled volley. Watford responded to the clear-cut chance from MacArthur with their closest effort of the opening 20 minutes, again Saar the protagonist with Cahill blocking the close-range effort well. Wilfred Zaha began to find his way into the game as the Hornets crowd and players began to target Palace's winger which provoked the amusing response from the away end of Did You Cry at Wembley? Watford received their first yellow card of the afternoon which had been coming with Abdel Decore penalised for a foul on Jordan Ayew on 33 minutes. The tensions continued to rise for a feisty first 45 minutes with Zaha receiving a caution. Watford's Craig Cathcart was not far behind Palace's winger in finding his name in Martin Atkinson's little black book for an overzealous challenge on Luka Milivojevic. Roy Hodgson made a half-time sub with Jara Riedewald replacing Slup at left-back and it was a free kick from that area of the pitch that brought Watford's first chance of the second 45. However, Decore's weak header was easily dealt with by Guaita. De Lefeo then provided a more worrying test for the Eagles, despite his curled effort going wide of Guaita's left-hand post. The penetrative run at the heart of the Palace defence caused concern. Hodgson made his second change of the game on 73 minutes, with Townsend making way for Christian Benteke, as the game began to open up slightly, with Zahar enjoying several moments of joy down Palace's left, up against Firmino, which included a penalty shout against Christian Kalasebi. Watford's first change saw Roberto Pereira make way for Andre Gray on 77 minutes, and then Decore left the pitch for Emmanuel Chalaba one minute later. With every passing second, the game became more and more open, with the exception in all four stands that the final 10 or so minutes of the game could be a chance for either team to take all three points. Palace's top scorer Ayu almost brought the opener with the striker's excellent footwork creating an opening down Watford's right hand side of the penalty area and although the strike was well hit it rose above Ben Foster's goal. Moments later Watford broke which created a 3 on 2 in their favour. Saar released De Feu, who drove at the Palace box before chipping to the back post for Saar to try and head home. However, Kelly retreated back well to contestable with Saar who failed to score. If Kelly's defensive moment was one of desire to get back, then Cahill's tackle a few minutes later, with a last ditch on Saar after Troy Dini had put his teammate through, was the very definition of it. Both teams could inoculate winner courtesy of counter-attacks, with Watford going close with Gray and Palace countering via Zahar from a Watford corner before Kapuwe tactically fouled the Eagles winger. Ultimately, the game ended as it started, in what was a fiercely contested 90 minutes, but the Eagles can be pleased with seven points and three clean sheets in a week. So I'm now going to move on to my player ratings, but before I start, don't forget you can follow us on Twitter and Facebook at Crystal Palace for the latest Palace news. So if you are someone like me who does like to follow a vast array of Palace accounts, whether that be on Twitter or Facebook, then of course do head over to the respective sites and follow our accounts there. Now obviously if you do want a place to get all the latest Palace news, so whether that's sort of your general club news, stuff about the academy, stuff about the stadium, stuff about the ladies team and obviously sort of things regarding injury news and things like that and team news, of course obviously do give us a follow because of course we do regularly update it with the latest news. So if you're someone who just wants another account to follow to obviously get all that news in one place and of course I'd 
recommend you do follow us on there and obviously alongside that we obviously complement that with transfer news so we're not even in the January transfer window yet but there's loads of rumours surrounding players who are going to go, come in players who are going to go out so of course if you want to keep up to date with all the latest transfer news all of the rumours all of the quotes all of the ins and outs and confirmed transfers as well because sometimes you know you might see an academy player goes out on loan and actually you may not have even known so obviously if you want to keep up to date with all of their ongoings with transfers of course i'd recommend you follow us as well and of course sort of general alongside sort of the general news we also post interviews as well so you know if we find something interesting that a player said that management have said or an agent has said once again link about the transfers obviously if there's something we found in an interview that we think you guys might like Obviously, we'll share it on the account. And, you know, I think all together with that, with the news and the transfer uh, rumours, I think we've got a nice combination there. So if you're someone who wants to get all of this sort of stuff all in one place, then like I said, I highly recommend you do follow us on both our Twitter and Facebook pages. And, of course, we also have our, uh, you know, give our own opinion on there. So there's a few of us who run the page. Obviously, you know, just before the game, reacting to the team news, reacting to injury news, and obviously reacting to starting lineups and things that have happened at the game. And of course, during half time and at full time, we also give our, our opinions and reaction as well. So if you do want another account to follow, obviously for the news, but also just for an opinion, just to hear what someone else is thinking about the game, of course, once again, I'd highly recommend you do follow us on our accounts. Now, a great place for you guys to share your opinion is, of course, in the YouTube comments. So if you are listening to the podcast on YouTube, then do feel free to drop a comment below the video with your player ratings where you rate the player's performances from 1 to 10, and that is with 10 being the best. And I say this every week, but I just want it, you know, I want you guys to share your opinion in the comment section below, you know, rating the players from 1 to 10 with 10 being the best. And that's just so that, you know, I can get your views of the game, because rather than me just having my opinion of the game, if you guys share your comments, we can obviously compare how we thought the players performed and of course have a discussion based upon that because certainly there's going to be players we disagree with maybe rating too highly maybe rating too low um so you know if you're somebody you know has a different opinion to me or just wants to share it anyway of course feel free to do that in the comment section below and even if you don't want to do your player ratings comment below with your general views of the game so whether you're a Watford or you're a Palace fan obviously from a Palace perspective yes it was disappointing not to actually get our third win in a row but then likewise it's actually nice to get our third clean sheet in a row so even though we played quite dis it was quite disappointing i suppose the way we played given the fact that we played so well midweek but maybe we were tired so that's why we didn't play well and then likewise at watford i think they're going to be ecstatic with it because obviously the bottom of the league and for the moment i think they're on eight or nine points so you know any point they can get at the minute is they'll be happy with it so obviously palace perspective a little bit disappointing but understandably you know given midweek we can understand us not playing playing that great and of course likewise Watford I think they're quite happy in the fact that, that we obviously weren't able to beat them and the fact that we frustrate they frustrated us but then likewise they're just happy with the point given their situation this season so obviously if you're a Watford or Palace fan feel free to uh, comment below with your views and once again it's so that I can read them I can hear what listen to and read through what you guys have to say and also obviously the other people who come to the podcast don't just listen to me obviously discussing the players but also can read the comment section as well and basically build a discussion upon that and you know if there's anything you think i've missed or any questions you want to ask also feel free to comment that below once again so we can build this, uh, a discussion based upon that so if you do want to follow any of the social media pages that I've mentioned or join our Facebook group, then do check all the links that will be in the description below. But I'm now going to move on to my play rating, starting to go with Fashenta Guaita, who I'm going to give a 7 overall. Now in terms of Guaita's game, you know, I've given him a 7 overall because it was just once again one of these standard performances from him where he'd done what he had to do defensively in terms of making the saves, making catches and just being that presence at the back. But then likewise, he wasn't really tested as much as he has been done in previous weeks. So you've got to look at it and go, it was quite a quiet game, but when called upon, he was able to make himself count. And that's why i really given him the 7 overall because for the most part, he didn't have too much to do. But the thing that I really like about him and this game in particular, really just a uh, sort of... Yeah, it really st stood out for me, it really sums up him, is the fact that when he had to, he made some excellent saves as well. And they're not just sort of saves that are, are good because, you know, they're acrobatic. They're saves that are good because of that, but mainly because of the fact that it keeps us in the game. They're important saves at important periods in the game, which of course uh, enable us to either keep our lead or maintain the clean sheet that we've got. So the fact that Guaita, week in, week out, is either making fantastic saves or making saves to keep us in the game or to maintain our clean sheet whenever he's making saves like he done in this game here in terms of the clean sheet side of it it was really great to see now for me you know I, I sort of find myself repeating myself every week because of obviously because obviously he always seems to make 
the fantastic save after fantastic save but there was one little negative i picked out from his performance and this is something that i've seen a few people mention not really highlighted because of how good uh, his saves were in the game but there were a few times where he seemed a little bit slower than usual to actually come off his line and claim balls and have that dominance presence on the the back line and i suppose you could look at it and go and nearly cause us problems luckily we got away with it but you know, normally he's very alert, he's on to it, you know, in terms of catching the balls, he's getting his positioning right. And there were just a few times, you know, here at the weekend that actually uh, it wasn't that the decision making was bad, it was just he it was a bit slow with it. And, you know, that's something I've seen a few people pick out and I've looked at it and I can see it slightly. So I thought I'd just mention it anyway, but it didn't really hamper his performance because, like I said, even though he didn't have much to do and, and obviously he was a bit slow at times in terms of actually coming out of his area, I think that the fact that he you know made excellent saves like he always does to help us maintain that clean sheet and just obviously as well as the command of the back four that was of course great to see so once again here for Shento Guaita you know fantastic performance from him and certainly deserving of the seven I've given him so I'm now going to move on to the first player in our back four and that is the right back Martin Kelly who I'm going to give a seven overall now to be honest much like Guaita there isn't really too much to say about Kelly's performance in terms of key moments in the game or you know how good he was and that's just because he was Mr Reliable done what he had to do defensively and that's why I've given him the 7 overall because he fully deserved to get the clean sheet given his defensive output and in terms of every, other parts of his game in terms of you know getting forward and just giving you know de dealing with the opposition essentially he done a fantastic job at that and that's why I've given him a 7. Now in terms of just looking at moments in the game there isn't really sort of ones I can pick out in particular but just the fact that he had a steady game is the thing that's important for me you know no sort of heroics or no you know real match saving moments but just consistently throughout the whole game the whole 90 minutes just doing what you have to do defensively and the fact that once again he's playing out of position but week in week out he's starting to sort of develop back into this right back role obviously with the absence of Joe Ward so the fact that he's been Mr Reliable not only in his performances but in terms of going back to his old position and readapting to it and playing well there as well that's something which of course impressed me because you can understand, you know, he hasn't played right back for a few seasons now, so it might take him a few games to get used to it. But the fact that as soon as he was thrown back into the right back role, he's just sort of gone back in there and slotted back in there as if he's never been away. And that's something that really impressed me with his performance because obviously Watford, obviously they're not having a great season, but people like Saar, people like Delefeu, they've caused lots of teams problems in the past and obviously against us as well so of course they were the tricky players and you know the fact that Martin Kelly done a reasonably good job in terms of restricting these players was of course great to see so once again here no real key, key moments for me to pick out with Kelly's performance other than the fact that he's you know fully deserves the seven I've given him in terms of just having another reliable uh, performance where of course he was solid at the back and once again a uh, really deserved clean sheet to add to his collection. So I'm now going to move on to the first centre-back and that is James Tompkins who I'm going to give a 6 overall. Now in terms of Tompkins performance you know I can really sort of say the same for the back four really in terms of we were defensively solid fully deserving of the clean sheet we got and in terms of restricting Watford's tricky players we've done a reasonably good job of that. I, make think, I think a few times maybe Saar got the better of uh, the back four but on the most part we've done a relatively good job up against their players but in terms of Tompkins in particular I've given him a six because as opposed to a seven I've given uh, other players and that's not because he was necessarily bad it's just the fact that he wasn't as good as he was on Tuesday night you know I've given him a six because he's still done his shift and he still contributed to the clean sheet we had it's just the fact that he wasn't as dominant in terms of you know winning the aerial challenges you know making tackles making blocks and he was still doing that in the game but not to the same sort of same high level or same standard really really high standard that he set midweek and you know I think that's mainly you could say he's not as dominant uh, in terms of as he was on Tuesday and that's probably maybe down to his fatigue because of course he's just come back from injury obviously played midweek a few days later you're playing again so maybe that played a part in him not playing that uh, as well as he did on Tuesday but don't take you know you got you can't take that away from his performance because he's still he's got the six because he's still done a shift for the team and that's I've said this loads of times last season you know I'd rather a player actually just have an average game rather than having loads and loads and loads of good games and then just loads of loads of terrible games and that's exactly what we get with some players so it's nice to see with Tompkins you know if he's not going to have a really really great game just have an average game just get through it and do what you do what you have to do to help the team and that's what I really liked about his performance in terms of he was very tidy on and off the ball done what he had to do uh, in terms of restricting Watford's players and that of course was great to see and like I said fully deserving of these six I've given him 
Now, in terms of something else about his game, which I thought was quite impressive, is obviously we know the last sort of three games or so, we've had injuries in defence, and we've had loads of different combinations in the back four, and that was sort of the same thing here. Obviously, we played, or we started with Kelly and Slut as the full-backs, and obviously Tompkins and Cahill down the middle. Obviously, this game here, Jeffrey Slut went off at half-time injured, and on came Jara Reedwald. Obviously, he that was Reedwald's first game he's played for Palace this season, or in the, in the Premier League he's played for us this season, so of course... You're going to understand you've got someone who hasn't played much. So it might take them a bit of time to get used to it. And of course, likewise, he's played for Palace in a defensive midfield role. And obviously centre back under Frank De Boer. But mainly as a defensive midfielder. So of course, he hasn't played at left back. So you can understand, obviously, Tompkins might have had difficulty in terms of adapting to the fact that Jeffrey Slack went off and Reed Ward came on. But the fact that I think that, uh, for me personally at least, the fact that Tompkins adapted so well to the different partners he's had in, in the back four in the last few games or so. But in particular at the weekend, you know, uh, young young Reedwald hasn't played much this season so the fact that Tompkins adapted to play well alongside him as well as just you know helping through the game was of course great to see so even though I've given him a six because his performance wasn't as good as it was midweek he's still done a shift for the team and in terms of adapting uh, to whoever he was playing alongside in the back four as well as just you know guiding Reed Ward through the game that was something that I was really impressed with so once again here James Tompkins fully deserving of the six I've given him in terms of you know his defensive work contribution to the clean sheet and how he adapted to the different partners he had at centre back so moving on now to Gary Cahill who is our second centre back who I'm going to give an 8 overall now in terms of Cahill's performance obviously it's worth mentioning that obviously the two games prior to this obviously he was out injured and of course we kept two clean sheets in that game which once again shows the quality and you know the, the squad depth we've got in the team in the fact that when someone is pi as pivotal you know as Cahill's been this season is out injured we've got players who can actually step up to the plate so it was, it was obviously nice to see him return back to the team obviously with him uh, being the first choice centre back really for us uh, this season but likewise it's nice to see him actually come back and not just get his position back in the team because he was first choice before he got injured but actually show why he should be the first choice and show why he went straight back into the team and that's what I like to see from him because sometimes you get players who are obviously first choice and they just automatically go back into back into the team after injury but you know the fact that Cahill came back into the team and actually you know showed why he should be in the team with such a good performance was of course great to see and that's why I've given him the eight overall now obviously we've obviously got other players uh, who were injured in the f in the defence so obviously he was probably you know there was no reason why Cahill wouldn't be back in the team because of course we're we obviously we've got good squad squad depth there but obviously we've got loads of injuries at centre back at the minute but nevertheless you know it was nice to see actually a player who rather than just automatically getting back into the team they obviously get back into the team and prove why they automatically got put in there you know in terms of having a really good performance so uh, I've given him the 8 mainly because of just how well he played given the fact that he's just come back from injury but also you know when you've got to look at the clean sheet the whole back four is obviously they obviously played their part including uh, Guaita as well so the back five obviously played their part in us keeping the clean sheet but for me the real pinnacle the real moment or the real person really responsible for us keeping the clean sheet was Gary Cahill because he was that difference between us actually losing that game and the point that we gained and you know whilst it's a bit disappointing or we only got a point against bottom of the league you know the fact that we kept our third consecutive clean sheet is also something which you've got to shout about as well because it shows how solid we've been in defence the past few weeks or so but for me Gary Cahill in this game here was the difference because you know you've got to look right at the end of the game Watford players got a chance to run through on goal and Cahill gets the slightest of touches and you know nips the ball out for a corner but or oh, I think do you go for a, yeah I think it went out for a corner you know that lit list of interventions could have you know if he hadn't have made that they could have changed the game would have been 1-0 Watford and we would have lost the point that we arguably probably deserved given you know how sort of average both teams performed throughout the game so you know Cahill was the real difference you know in terms of us getting the point because if he hadn't have made uh, the interceptions he'd done throughout the whole game but in particular the one right at the end you know where he just nipped the ball up off the opposition if he hadn't have had that um, if he hadn't have made that intervention then the game would have been completely different and you know it really goes back to me you know looking at the eight I've given him it, I think the word to use is powerful because that's exactly what I got from his performance in terms of being that that rock at the at the back of the defence, you know, making sure nothing can get past you, frustrating the opposition, and then when it does matter, you know, making these important uh, blocks and interceptions, in particular the one at the end, that's something which really sort of uh, stood out for me. And you know, like I've said, it is a game-saving block because you know if that had gone in, would have been one nil, and we, you know, I think it was sort of 85, sort of 88 minutes or so thereabouts, sort of towards the end of the game. 
we go one nil down and we, we didn't look like scoring in the the uh, 80 or so minutes before that so we probably would have lost that game one nil if he hadn't have made the interception so for me obviously his overall performance was good the fact that he came back from injury and played as well as he did was good but for me he was the difference between us winning and uh, sorry between us drawing or losing that game here and that's why I've given him the eight overall because like I said that block at the end is really sort of a a, a game, like I said, a game-saving thing, and you know you've got to look at it and go, that's got to be one of the blocks or one of the interceptions of the season because obviously it could have completely changed the whole complexion of the whole game. So once again here, you know, a very powerful game from Gary Cahill and a, a, a nice return, obviously coming back from injury. So I'm now going to move on to the final play in our defence, and that is the left back Jeffrey Slop, who I'm going to give a six overall. Now in terms of Jeffrey Slop's performance, you know, I can only really talk about it. I can only talk about the first half, obviously, because. That was the time he was on the pitch. And actually, before he got injured, obviously, just before half-time, I think he was doing an alright job at left-back in terms of containing Watford, in terms of keeping us defensively solid at the back, as well as obviously proving to be an outlet, you know, down at left-hand side, if and when he was needed. So actually, in that first half, obviously, when he was on the pitch, right before he got injured, he was actually being having an alright contribution to the team. So, of course, it was disappointing when he went off injured at half-time. And obviously... Obviously, Joel Reedwall came on, and I'll talk about him later, and I think that was a really good replacement. Obviously, not that you want Jeffrey Slup to be injured, but the fact that we had someone like Joel who hasn't played much this season, but when he got his chance, he completely took it. So at least we got to see. So the only positive, really, to come out of Jeffrey Slup getting injured is the fact that we got to see Reedwall actually play and actually play well. But like I've said, in terms of Jeffrey Slup's performance, I think I can only give him a six, and that's just because he was running up and down that left flank, doing what he has to do defensively. And of course, we probably, if he had stayed on the pitch and not been injured, we, we probably wouldn't have seen Reedwall and seen what he had to offer. And I think Jeffrey Slup probably would have contributed in that second half to us keeping a clean sheet in the same way Reedwall did, because I think that they were both sort of on par in terms of their contribution in the game is obviously just a little bit disappointing that obviously Jeffrey Slup given the heroics uh, of obviously the goal that he scored midweek a little bit disappointing that he went off at half time and obviously touch wood hopefully the injury isn't too serious because of course he is our, our backup left back and you know now we have to use our backup backup left back in Reed Ward which is obviously a little bit worrying in terms of the injuries piling up but you know like I've said you know hopefully it isn't too serious and hopefully you know Jeffrey Slup can you know come back in the next Sort of, or use the week or so we've got, you know, before the Brighton game to get back to full fitness because I really think we need him, obviously, for the big game we've got coming up on Monday night against Brighton. But, you know, like I've said, in terms of his performance, going to give him a six because up until we got injured, he was an all, he was having an all right contribution both offensively and defensively to the team. But, you know, like I've said, I think the six is a fair result. So I'm now going to move on to the first player in our midfield, and that is the winger, Andros Townsend, who I'm going to give a six overall. Now, in terms of the formation we played, obviously it's a little bit debatable. You know, you could say that it was a 4-3-3 with Townsend and Zahar obviously playing out wide uh, up front with uh, Ayu. But then you could also look at it and go sort of, it was more of a five across midfield. And that's just because, maybe because of the heroics and because of the fatigue that the team had uh, after the of the midweek game maybe we just wanted to pack out the midfield a little bit more so rather than playing with out and out wingers we we'll sort of play with wide midfielders with Townsend and Zahar obviously playing wide with Zahar obviously playing a little bit more in advance than say Townsend was on the other side but in terms of Townsend playing on the primarily on that right hand side throughout the game I think that you know in terms of his offensive work that was slightly lacking in this game here you know we didn't quite see him you know get on the ball that much or as much as we would have liked. We didn't see enough crosses coming into the area. Didn't see enough of him actually getting on the ball and trying to have shots and cut inside. So we didn't see that part of his game. But the reason I've given him six is all down to his defensive work because as much as the back four and the goalkeeper was obviously crucial to us keeping a clean sheet, just that little bit of help, that little bit of protection that Townsend brought to the team is almost the same worth, you know, in terms of, you know, getting the clean sheet it was almost the same worth as what the defenders did and you know that was what I really liked to see because although you know he was struggling to get any sort of partnerships going forward he was struggling to sort of get going in terms of that offensive play it was just nice to see him actually working well running up and down the flanks doing his defensive duties and just providing extra protection you know for people like Kelly people like Slough just obviously where whichever obviously side of the pitch he was playing at the time so the fact that he was able to do that was of course great to see and I think what you've also got to look at is that you know yes Sahar also didn't have the greatest game Ayu also didn't have the greatest game and I think you could say yeah you know obviously the attacking side of our game weren't really working or weren't really sort of didn't really click for us today but for Townsend in particular it completely didn't click for him because 
going forward I think he really really struggled to get anything going whereas the others you saw little sparks here and there of what they could do so you know even though I think the other two forward players you know in Zahar and Ayu also struggled in the game I think Townsend struggled the most and whether that's because of just how Watford defended or whether it's just the fact that you know because he was doing all of this defensive work which don't get me wrong is good maybe that just took away from what he could have done offensively but like I said I do, I do think the six is a fair result you know in terms of if you have any attacking player who you know who's willing to track back and willing to help out defensively and then obviously the the result of that is you get a clean sheet and you've you've got to give them the credit because of course game here against Watford obviously last few games against them against them obviously weren't great we obviously they beat us three times last season so of course it was nice for us you know to actually not lose a game against Watford and, and you know and sort of try and um, you know make make good use of our good season in terms of we're playing well we're high flying at the minute so top half of the table and you know teams like Watford who are bottom of the table we really need to be getting the better of them if we obviously want to aspire to get in and getting in and obviously staying in the top half of the table so whilst Townsend defensive work was good would it be nice to see him actually just have a go and at least try and attack them to try and at least get something from the game because of course you can understand us being tired from midweek but he was a player who got taken off at half time in that game there so it would have been a little bit nicer just to see a bit more him uh, from him in the attacking sense because like I said you know we've got the capabilities as we've seen this season to obviously push up the table so we really need players like Townsend in games like this where it's pretty dead from both teams to obviously step up and see that quality offensively but like I said I do think the six is a fair result now in terms of Cheku Kiate obviously one of our three players in playing in midfield I'm going to give him a seven overall because I think much like what we you know what we sort of come to expect from him you know it was a very solid performance from him you know using his physicality using his pace using his height just to get the better of the the midfield and just win that midfield battle which I think we've done relatively well in this game here and you know even though both teams weren't great in terms of quality I think that we just made it a little bit more difficult for Watford going down the middle and that was down to people like Kiate, like Milivojevic, like MacArthur just playing really well and really sort of compact in the midfield. Now that's not to say that people like Saar and people like Delefe who got obviously joy didn't get joy down the uh, the flank because certainly you know when Watford counter-attacked they obviously attacked us down the wings and we've done the same to them as well so you've got to look at it and go you know the reason why they were attacking or both teams were attacking down the wings is because actually the centre of the park was defended relatively well from both teams sets of midfielders and you know Kiate was quite key at that. Now in terms of you know giving him a seven I think the fact that he was just solid he done what he had to do defensively and you know the the occasions where he did manage to get forward he was also you know able to pass the ball out and get into good positions. Yes we saw that from his performance or well I, I at least saw it uh, from his performance he obviously had a little bit less energy than Tuesday night and you know you can understand that you know he sort of burned out all of his energy from playing so well at centre-back midweek but then you've also got to look at it and go actually you've got to give him praise because even though it, he was quite you know obviously fatigued he, you could quite you could really see physically you know that he wasn't uh, as uh, energetic as he has been previously but the fact that he still performed to a level which allowed him to control that midfield and sort of you know maintain the possession that we did have in the game is something which really did impress me so whilst Kiate may not have had as much energy as much pace as he usually would do the fact that with the little less energy that he had the fact that he was still able to perform well was of course great to see as well and that's why I've given him a seven really you know you know the fact that he was solid in midfield albeit not as much as he normally is uh, is but the fact that he was able to still match somewhat that level that he normally sets was of course great to see so once again here check you Kiate, fully deserving of the seven I've given him so I'm now going to move on to the captain in the team and that is Luka Milivojevic who I'm going to give a six overall now in terms of Luka's performance in the midfield obviously whilst the whole of the team obviously defended well to contribute to the clean sheet and whilst I've obviously given a little bit of praise to him in terms of working well with Kiate and Makafa I think in terms of the midfield three he was probably the weakest of the three and that's not to say he had a terrible performance because I've given him a six as opposed to maybe a five which some people may say his his performance warranted in terms of not being that great but I just think that in terms of the midfield three you'd expect the captain to be the best and the mainstay in that midfield three and actually be the guy dominating possession dominating play restricting the opposition and actually we didn't quite get that in the game and you know it wasn't the fact that he was terrible he just wasn't great and it was a pretty average performance from him you know obviously we like to see him obviously win possession you know 
drive forward, make these challenges defensively. And whilst we saw that in this game here, it was sort of to a lesser extent in terms of he wasn't as dominant. He, w he didn't make his presence known much in the game. He wasn't looking to get involved as much as he normally would do. And in terms of his set-piece deliveries, you know, we've got a question. Yes, some of his deliveries can be good, as we've seen this season, in terms of putting the ball directly to someone's head on, on corners or, you know, putting the ball into the area from... from um, free kicks into dangerous positions yes that has been the case this season but likewise there's been other set pieces where he's been disappointing so it does beg the question you know whether we do need a secondary uh set piece taker or someone just to to vary up you know rather than just going with the same person because they're just a designated player let someone like Townsend or let someone like McCarver someone sort of who doesn't normally take set pieces let them actually take them because obviously this game here was a performance where of course Luca was quite average you know below par by his standards but it wasn't really helped by the fact that in terms of his set piece deliveries they weren't great either and that's just something I've seen a lot of people talk about recently on Twitter and I think you know it is worth pointing out because of course we've seen him have really really good games this season but this was a game where he could have been good in midfield but he was fairly average and he didn't even make up for that average performance with the set piece deliveries because they were obviously as disappointing so whilst he went about in an average way doing his job in the midfield you know still you know making life difficult for Watford he wasn't as effective as he was as we know he can be and that was both defensively in terms of that side of his game but also offensively in terms of holding on to possession driving forward and doing what we've come to expect from him and you know obviously a few people have been questioning him this season in terms of saying you know as the captain you need to be one of the, the best players on the pitch you need to always be up for it but he always just seems to go through spells of being average and being them having really really good games but then going average again so this was obviously one of his average games but hopefully you know it's one one of these ones where he's probably fatigued from midweek not really playing that great couldn't really get into the game because of course we, we know what he can do we've seen him have lots of quality this season but of course likewise we've, we've seen him have lots of performances like this where he wasn't as effective as we, has, as we know he can be. So once again here, the captain, Luka Milivojevic, a little bit of a disappointing performance, you know, in terms of his standards. But certainly, you know, if he, if he, you know, if, if he indeed was fatigued, which I think could be a valid reason why he didn't play that well, then of course, hopefully, with a big game coming up against Brighton, we really need to, him to get back up to full, to full health, get back, to, get back all of his energy, and really step up for that game. Because obviously, in the derby, you need your captain to step up and make himself count and actually lead the team. Uh, to victory hopefully so if we if we can do that if we can up his game you know and hopefully get the preparation ready you know for that Brighton game then hopefully he can have a better performance than he obviously did have this weekend so now going to move on to the final uh, midfielder in that midfield three and that is James McArthur who I'm going to give a seven overall now much like what I said with Chiarty in terms of what we normally expect from uh, the player McArthur you know like we see week in week out in terms of having energy in terms of covering a lot of ground that's exactly what we got from his performance here because in that first half in particular he was everywhere he was covering a lot of ground chasing things down and just making life difficult for Watford which of course was really really great to see and it would have been nice you know I think McArthur and Carter are prime examples of what you want your midfielders to do so going back to Luca, if Luca had just shown a little bit more energy or just covered a little bit more ground or just looked to to get involved a little bit more with his performance then maybe he could have had a better sort of overall impact on the game but you know in terms of McArthur for me I've given him a seven because I think he fully deserved it and you know like I said in particular for that first half contribution where he was chasing everything down and even though we obviously weren't playing great offensively obviously that led to sort of Watford taking advantage not that they were great offensively but, you know, Watford had a, bit, a little bit of pressure on us and that just meant that someone like McArthur sort of just got drawn into a more defensive role. Now, that's not necessarily a negative thing because at least it just keeps us solid at the back and helped us get that clean sheet. But then you want your midfielder like McArthur. You don't want him just to sit back and defend. You want to allow him to go forward and be found in advanced position so he can contribute uh, that part of his game. So, in that respect, it was a little bit disappointing not to see him go slightly further forward. But that's just because of how... He was covering a lot of ground in that first half and because of Watford were playing, uh, they weren't great offensively but playing better offensively than we were obviously meant that he was drawn into a more defensive role and that's just because they looked to get increasingly on the top and it wasn't like Watford were completely all over us because uh, I, th I think both teams sort of uh, cancelled each other out hence why it was nil-nil but when Watford did have chances obviously meant that McArthur played slightly deeper than he normally would do but like I've said 
fully deserving of the seven I've given him in terms of having that energy in midfield, chasing things down, covering a lot of ground, and the fact that in a game where it's pretty much a stalemate, neither team can seem to score, if you're going to sacrifice your attacking game just to help the team out defensively, then I suppose so be it. And that's what we got with MacArthur's performance. You know, he went into that defensive role and just sort of helped us solidify that midfield, which allowed us to solidify the defence, which of course allowed us to go through the game and keep our clean sheet. But once again here, you know, I think James MacArthur fully deserves these seven I've given him. So in terms of the final player in our midfield, and this is obviously more of a forward player in the midfield five, but whichever way you look at it, that is Wilfred Zaha, who I'm going to give a six overall. So in terms of the majority of the game, obviously he was playing out wide on the left hand side. Obviously, you could say, argue he was a winger in the game, but then also equally, you could say that because obviously he wasn't as attacking as he usually was do, that's why you could actually see him fitting into that wide midfield role. But whichever way you look at our formation, you know, he was playing on the left, Townsend on the right, and of course, are you up top? And in terms of, you know, being part of that midfield and being part of that front three as well, I think he's done a relatively good job here, but I've given him a six, and that's just because even though he'd done a good job in terms of creating chances for himself he didn't quite do it to the standard or the amount that we have done and seen previously because he'd done a lot of good work in the game lots of good stuff in terms of tricks and skills in terms of running past players in terms of getting the better of them in terms of tricking them so all of this part of his game was good and he, we could clearly see that he was trying to do it but obviously he was undermined by the actually the dramatics which obviously seemed to help Watford so Watford obviously liked to kick in people liked the core eh? absolutely sort of hitting Zaha to the ground and it's a bit ridiculous you know that one moment where Zaha got booked but basically both players just ran into each other nothing malicious there both players really shouldn't have, no one should have been booked anyway because both players were just not looking at each other just ran into each other but instead Zaha got booked for that and that just sort of seemed to put fuel into the fire you know made the game a little bit more dramatic and the fact that they kept kicking him throughout the game kept chipping him down kept hitting him obviously impacted his influence on the game but of course sort of um impacted just the whole team the way the team was playing in the fact that just Watford's dirty tactics everything we were trying to do they were just playing dirty to try and stop us and obviously the fact that we saw well Zaha was a little bit dramatic towards it just sort of helped Watford played into their hands because you frustrated our best player who who was doing good things trying to do good things but then you keep frustrating him and obviously in the end the result is he's not going to have as much impact as he, as he usually would do and that's exactly what we got in the game here because Zaha many many times you know had um, loads of chances to show off his good his skills you know he had loads of good stuff in terms of chances for himself but the fact that Watford kept kicking in the fact that he got booked for a silly booking which wasn't a booking for either player anyway you know all of these things just added together it, it, it was you know sort of adds together to what was a disappointing performance from him and you know it wasn't disappointing because he weren't trying because you know you could see Zaha was trying to run at players trying to get the better off of the opposition it's just the fact that they were frustrating him the fact that they were kicking him and hacking him down and once again we know, we know that because of course that's Watford's tactics every time with Zaha but he obviously seemed to get the better off of him and the team as a whole so I do think on reflection I do think these six I've given Zaha is a fair result so I'm now going to move on to the final player in our team and that is the striker Jordan Ayew who I'm going to give a six overall now in terms of his, his game here you know I've given him a six because much like the rest of the forward players or the the attacking players in in Townsend and Zaha, obviously. I don't actually think that I necessarily was terrible in the game, much like the other other two players weren't. It's just the fact that they didn't really have that much impact offensively on the game, and that of course was a little bit disappointing. Now, there was one moment in the game which really stood out for me with Ayu's performance, and that's obviously when he thought the ball was gonna sort of rifle into that top right hand corner of the goal. Obviously it would have been a great goal to score, you know, uh, a good time obviously to score as well. But then obviously it whistled just over and that was the thing that was a little bit disappointing in the fact that if that chance had just gone a few more inches either side, uh, it would have rifled into that top right corner, made it 1-0 and it would have been a whole different story. So whilst there weren't many other chances and other moments I could really talk about in the game in terms of IU's performance, that one in particular really stands out for me because yes he didn't do anything much wrong in terms of he, he thought the ball was going to go into the top corner but it went just over so he'd done all the hard work but couldn't quite have the finish on it 
it's just the fact that it would have been nicer to see more of them sort of chances throughout the game. And, you know, you could argue that he was one of the players who actually looked like he was suffering from the midweek game. And that's just because even though he didn't score and he didn't contribute much midweek, the fact that he just kept running, he kept chasing things down, he was getting involved in the midfield, all of that work he was doing on Tuesday night, it was quite evident that that wore him out because he was lacking a little bit of energy on this game here, weren't chasing as many things down. And you can understand him perhaps, you know, looking a bit tired and not playing as well as he normally would do and that's just all down to him you know sort of that that reaction that impact from the midweek game but like I've said here you know are you in terms of the front three he wasn't necessarily the worst player there because I think that um I think all players they just had an average performance no one was particularly bad in that uh combination of three attacking players but I just think it would be nicer even though he hasn't got energy Rather than him chasing the ball down and using more up, using up more energy, maybe just play in a more advanced position and just stay further up the pitch and just be available when Palace counterattack, as opposed to do what you normally do: use up all your energy, cover a lot of ground, try and get the ball from deep. Just stay up the top and allow people like Townsend and Zaha to get the ball to you instead, because I think maybe that could have changed the way. Um, are you played in the game here? But like I've said, other than that one moment he had where the ball just went over, I think he just you know was a pretty average performance here you know the fact that he looked like he was quite evident that he was suffering from the midweek grain was a little bit disappointing but then likewise you can understand the fact that you know he played so well midweek so of course the knock-on effect of that is that your next game you play pretty average but like i've said uh, jordan are you here fully deserving of the six i've given him so I'm now going to move briefly on to the three substitutions Palace made in the game, starting with Jara Reedward, who I'm going to give a 7 overall. Now in terms of him, obviously I briefly mentioned it with Jeffrey Slapp and the fact that obviously he came on a half time for him, obviously due to injury. But actually, obviously Reedward hasn't played, well this was his first Premier League game he's played this season, barely played, I think he played in the League Cup for the one game we were actually in it. And so realistically, he hasn't had much game time this season. So the fact that he actually came in, played as well as he did, and actually made a few, you know, important um, challenges throughout the game, you know, the time he was on the pitch, was obviously good to see. And that's why I've given him the 7 overall, because obviously we didn't expect him to come on. Obviously the injury, we didn't really know the injury was going to happen. But then likewise, I, I personally, even though when he came on, I didn't expect him to play as well as he did. Because, of course, for Palace, he's played as a defensive midfielder. So the fact that he's been moved to left back, even though he's played there before and played as well as he did in that position was, of course, great to see. Because, yes, he's played there before, if I think it was for Ajax. But, obviously, for Palace in the Premier League, obviously, a different sort of tempo. Obviously, he's been more suited to a midfield role. So the fact that he just went back to his old position, stayed composed, covered the ground relatively well. And in terms of, you know doing a, a decent job in terms of defending on the dangerous attacking players that Watford had I think on the most part he done well now of course on the ball as well he was very good but we've seen that from his midfield play so we know what he can do in terms of playing the ball out uh, playing the ball from from deep in midfield so actually we he sort of related that into the, his role at left back and done a relatively good job there but the only downside to his performance is just the fact that a few of the times he was out of position well quite a lot of the time he was out of position and arguably, if he does have to play left back for the next few games or so, you know, if Jeffrey Slup uh, injury is is serious, I don't think it probably won't be, and he might be back for the week uh, for Monday night. But whatever happens, if we need Readable to play there again, this game showed that he's got the capability there. And I think, even though he was out of position a few times in the game here at the weekend, that that will only get better as the more games he plays at left back, the better he's going to get in terms of playing that role and getting the positional play right. So once again here, Reedward really impressed me in terms of coming off the bench. Didn't haven't played a lot this season, but still played to a high standard and certainly begs questions as to whether he should continue at left back. I don't think he should because of course we've got people like Vanana and Slup there, but at least we now know he's got an, we've got an option there because he's shown that he can play there. In terms of James McCarthy, going to give him a 6 overall, nothing really to say about him, he just came on to solidify the midfield, to see the game out, I think the 6 is a fair result for him. And in terms of Christian Mateke, once again a 6 for him, yes he wasn't on the pitch long enough but, you know, we were just hoping for a little bit more when he came on and maybe, you know, the fact that we were obviously nil nil we wanted to try and at least get a goal in the game maybe there should have been a little bit more impetus from Benteke to actually get off the bench make an impact so he can try and regain his place in the side but like I've said all three substitutions uh, you know uh, as expected you know players other, other than Reedwald really you know McCarthy and Benteke that's it, who you expect to uh, come on but then you also could say you expect Reedwald to come on because of course Jeffrey Slup was injured and one of the only players who we can who can play defensive 
uh, defensively, who we actually had on the bench with Reed Ward. So actually, even though it's not good that Jeffrey Supp got injured, it was still a little bit uh, beneficial in the fact that we got to see Reed Ward play in this new position where he hasn't played for Palace before. And like I said, done an alright job there. Now, in terms of just a small sort of summary of the game, you know, you've got to really look at the defensive woes that we've got at the minute. Yes, we've got loads of depth at centre-back, which is why we were able to cope uh, with the defensive troubles we've got. The fact that we've able to play with different combinations in of back fours in the last three games and still get three clean sheets in a row goes to show the depth we've got there. But this game here was another prime example where we had to cope with that defensive, the defensive changes at the back. And the fact that Slut also went off at half time you fell to the injury curse you know it just goes to show that yes obviously we've got the depth there but now the depth is being tested and you know obviously it's all good well well and good having depth but you need your defenders who actually come into the side before injured players to gel well and be able to adapt with the different combinations so the fact that we've got all of these changes but we're also able to adapt with it or so far so good we've been able to adapt to it that was of course great to see and I suppose you've got to look a few weeks ago Roy Hodgson was praising the medical team saying oh we've got a full squad to choose from bar one player you know they're doing a great job you know we've got loads of depth and now after he said that a few weeks down the line and now we're getting a few injuries here and I'm not saying Roy Hodgson's cursed it but you know nevertheless we're getting all these defensive we're getting all these defensive problems and like I've said we've got the depth there which is good and it's also good that the team has actually been able to, do, to cope with the fact that the team obviously keeps changing now obviously you've got to look at the result here and yes it's disappointing you only get a point away from home against the bottom of the league team but then you've also got to look at it and go it's a good point away from home with the injuries we've got with the fact that we were just exhausted from midweek and just the fact that you know attacking wise Watford were just a little bit better than us on the counter but then in overall midfield play both teams cancelled each other out you've got to look at that and actually go on reflection a good point away from home and you'd much rather just get points on the board you know be one two in a row and rather than just throw it away you know and just try go all out attacking and then end up conceding just do a steady approach if you can get a goal that's good but you know the players are exhausted so just try and get through the game steadily and that's exactly what we did. Now, what you've got to also look at is the fact that the front three for us obviously struggled to get playing together. And it was a difficult game for them. So one of the reasons why it's a good away point is because of the fact that our attacking players weren't playing that great. So they weren't going to get anything from the game. So just hold on for the nil-nil draw. Keep another clean sheet, which of course was great to see. Now, what you've got to also look at is just a tough game. You know, Watford never seems to be an easy place for us to go in recent seasons. You know, they got the... They beat us three times last season, so you've got to look at that and go, anything but a loss will be better than what happened last season. So I suppose a, a draw is a step in the right direction. But like I said, in my opinion, it's a really, really good point. You know, obviously in terms of the referee, had his hands full. Don't think he, uh, you know, obviously I think it was quite bad in terms of didn't really have control of the game. And it was quite obvious that he lost control of the game in certain situations, you know, like booking Zahar when he... When two players just ran into each other, you know, there was no nothing malicious there from either player booking him there. So the referee maybe, you know, is having a slight off game here, but that's no no fault for us playing bad. You know, we were lethargic, we were tired, we were fatigued, we were playing in a lacklustre way. And whether that was down to just the tiredness from the Tuesday game, or whether it's just the fact that, you know, we weren't quite up for it, we weren't quite a hundred percent at the weekend, but whatever it is, in my opinion, even though it would have been nice to get all three points away from home against Watford who obviously we haven't beaten in a, in a while I do think a draw is a uh, is a good overall result So I'm now going to move on to my man of the match award but before I do that and give you my man of the match and why for the biggest influence in the game I'm now going to give you the four nominations up before for the award now obviously the performance, you know, in terms of the team performance wasn't necessarily as good as we saw in midweek, but obviously that's quite understandable, you know, we sort of used up all our energy to get, obviously, to hold on with 10 men and of course get the result we did during the week. So obviously in some aspects it was understandable that the whole team performance was a little bit lacklustre in comparison to midweek, but then likewise you could say, you know, no disrespect to Watford, you know, but they're bottom of the league. They've had a real terrible start to the season. They're on to their third manager. So for a team that was, I think we were sixth or seventh at the time, obviously we're ninth now. 
But for a team that's in the top half of the table, having a, as good of a season we are, we really should have been doing better. So it would have been nice to see a bit more from other players. But then likewise, you can see the other side of it. They're a bit sort of lethargic from, you know, the game during the week, which is understandable. And of course, bearing that in mind, obviously, we've now got a week and a, and a few days. I think it's like probably about nine days or so until the Brighton game. So we've got plenty of time to recover and, you know, get our energy levels back for that game. So hopefully we'll see a bit more of a better performance there. But in terms of this game here, obviously it wasn't the greatest performance, but, you know, nevertheless, uh, a clean sheet away from home, you know, I can't really argue with that as well. So I think the players I've picked are a real reflection, mainly of the clean sheet, but also, you know, actually people coming off the bench and having a real impact there. So the four players I've gone with, I've gone with Vicente Gaita, Gary Cahill, Martin Kelly and Jar Reedwald. Now in terms of Guaita, you know, he's he's in this shortlist nearly every week. But once again, yes, he may not have had much to do in the game, but he made some important saves. He made some excellent saves and done what he had to do in goal. And, you know... In terms of keeping his third consecutive clean sheet, you've also got to give him credit for that. So obviously the defence, uh, whoever's played there, obviously we've had a mixed match in players playing in defence. Whoever's been in front of him, Guaita has done well. And yet again, this game here with yet another sort of few changes in the back four, was able to play well again. In terms of Gary Cahill, obviously just come back from injury. And the fact that he played as well as he had done, considering this was his first game back from injury, is obviously credit to him and one of the reasons put him forward. But also just because he was the difference between us losing this game and actually getting this point we, we got. Because, of course, the clean sheet was great, but actually, you know, Gary Cahill was the main guy, you know, uh, to do with that. Because that save or that block he made right at the end of the game is basically the definition of keeping a point. Because if he hadn't have made that, it would have been 1-0 and would have been obviously a disappointing performance already but would have been the result would have been even worse because I would say that we didn't necessarily deserve to win the game but we certainly didn't deserve to lose the game so I think the draw is a fair reflection because both teams were quite lethargic weren't that great in the game but you know Gary Cahill was the difference in terms of not getting us uh, going to lose the game now much the same could be said for Martin Kelly in terms of playing at right back Mr Reliable done what he had to do for the team and um, yet again, you know, another clean sheet in a game that he's involved in. So once again, for his defensive work, for the clean sheet, I'll put uh, Martin Kelly forward. And of course, Jara Reedwald, he came off the bench. We haven't seen him much uh, this season. I think this was his first Premier League game all season. So we're 16 games in now, and this was only his first game. And the fact that he performed as well as he did coming off the bench and just slotted in at left back, even though he's played there before, but not for Palace. The fact that he just slotted in there, played as well as he did, as well as just, you know, given the fact that he was thrown in at half-time, was able just to get into the game as quickly as he did, was, of course, great to see. And obviously, it was going to be tough for him. There were a few times where he was out of position, and you can understand, with time, playing in Palace's system, playing at left-back if he has to, he'll get better. But in terms of just being composed, being able to pass the ball really well, and, you know, being relatively good defensively, other than the position, it was, of course, really great to see. So the fact that he came off the bench, played as well as he did, is why I've put Reed Ward forward for the award. But for me, in uh, what was, like I said, like quite a lackluster performance, it is really difficult for me to actually pick out a man in a match. And, of course, if you've looked at the Palace one, the official one, obviously Guaita won that one. But for me, obviously, I probably could give it to him in terms of his knife saves. But for that one block at the end of the game, I'm going to have to give it to Gary Cahill. So congratulations, uh, Gary. Uh, you don't get a trophy or certificate, but you do get my sincere congratulations on what was yet another solid performance from you. And the reason I've given it to him as opposed to as opposed to Guaita is because of that block at the end of the game and just how well he played throughout the rest of the game, given the fact that it was his first game back from injury. So all of them things put together is why I've nominated him. Obviously, feel free to comment below if you disagree or you think I've missed someone. But, you know, I do think on reflection, you know, Guaita, Cahill, uh, Kelly and Reed would obviously deserve a little bit more credit than, say, other players do on the field but like I've said you know no discredit to Guaita because he made some nice saves and was excellent throughout but just for that important block at the end of the game which obviously preserved the point that we had I'm going to give it to Gary Cahill so now you've heard my match report player rankings and my man of the match that concludes this week's podcast now I've got interviews with Roy Hodgson Gary Cahill and Jara Reedward following the game Jari welcome back firstly great to have you back in the side how are you feeling yeah thank you yeah feeling all right feeling good um good to get back out there and then a couple of days training before, so um, fitness-wise, I, I felt alright. It it Excellent. Um, quite a spicy affair. Bit of a battle, wasn't it? How did how did you uh, how did you find it in the heat of it? It was exactly that. I felt like it was um, a little bit scrappy um, at times, and it was a battle, like you said. Um, they made it tough. We were slightly disappointed first half of our performance, um, so it was important we went out second half and upped uh, the tempo a little bit. And I thought we did that. I thought we played in their half more second half. Um, 
But you know, we take a point. You know, that's seven yeah. points in, in three games. That's three clean sheets, which is something to be proud of. It shows the the work ethic of the team at the moment. Um, and if we wasn't going to win the game, it's important not to lose it. So that was another good character from the team. Particularly impressive those um, seven points from three games when you consider the, the amount of changes that, especially the defensive lines, had to had to endure. Um, it says a lot about you as a defensive unit. Yeah, it does. Like I said, as a whole collective unit, as a team, we're working hard for each other. Uh, that starts from Jordan up, up at the top, and um, we're reaping the rewards. But like you said, it's been a strange three games um, because if you look at the situation, the circumstances, there's so many changes back there. We've gone from having everybody fit and, and available to. You know, changes left, right, and centre. So, but we've adapted well, which is which is great. And wh whoever come in, the personnel that's changed has been fantastic, been playing well. And that's the most important thing that we do all this together, and uh, and we work hard for each other. And like I said, when you do that, you get your reward. With so many players sort of nursing niggles and potentially some slightly longer injuries, it's probably quite beneficial. Even though it's a very very busy month, we've got sort of eight nine days before the you know the big game of Brighton. It gives you gives you as a unit a chance to recover. We have certainly, yeah. Um, you know, that, that's my first game in the last three, so um, for me maybe not, but for the lads it's important. I think they've given everything in this, uh, this last week, so it's nice to get a little extra bit of break before we go into the busy period. Um, so we use that time wisely, rest up and prepare well for, for next Monday. Um, and oh, we, we'll be ready, we're in good form. Uh, we just need to keep things going um, and keep pushing each other. You know, never be happy with what we've done so far, keep pushing and keep driving each other as a team. Gyro, first Premier League minutes of the season. Well played, firstly. Uh, how do you feel? Uh, yeah, I feel okay. Of course, I feel disappointed that we didn't, uh, yeah, went away with a win. But uh, as you said, I'm happy with the minutes I made. Second half, and uh, I think we played very well as a team. But I th yeah, for in my opinion, I think we uh, there was a little bit more in this match. I think they played a lot of long balls. We had to try to bring the ball down and try to score but yeah I'm happy with the point but I think we could have won today so it struck us as being like a real battle like watching the game how was it to be sort of thrown in almost at the deep end at half time and, and get get up to up to speed with the game yeah of course it's difficult because they, you know uh, what they want to do they want to play aggressive and they need the point so they were playing long balls and fight with us and fight and talk to the referee and everything so it was a really a hard battle but I think we fought uh, well back as a team. Roy spoke very uh, positively about your performance in particular, and recently when he was uh, doing various media media um, interviews, he's also said how much of a brilliant trainer you are. You've been pushing really hard to get these chances, consistently getting picked on the bench. You must be proud with with, with how far you've come this year. Uh, yeah, of course. Uh, for me, I just like to play football. So whenever I'm on the pitch, I just like to play football and I give my all. If I'm playing or not playing, that's the manager's decision. For me, I'm just always showing up on training and I'm giving the best I have. And I'm happy that the manager noticed it and he talks to me as well about uh, my competition and when I'm gonna gonna play or not gonna play. So I'm very happy at this club. I'm a, I'm in a good place. The team is helping me very well when I'm not playing. They always yeah talk positive to me as well. So whenever I'm on the club on the training ground, yeah I'm just happy that I can play football on the highest level in the Premier League and I'm just giving my all and hopefully there's more minutes for me this season. You're, you're clearly a very versatile player, Jaro, because you've played defensive mid, centre mid, left mid earlier in the season in the Cup and, and left back today. That must be you know, a good opportunity for you with so many games coming thick and fast and a lot of injuries to the squad. You're in, you're in, you must be feeling like you're in quite a good place to get even more minutes. No, I, yeah, as you can see today, um, the last two or three games I've been on the bench and yeah... I'm a versatile player, so whenever someone's dropping out because of an injury or whatever, there's always an option that I could come in. I don't know in what position, but especially now, December, you know, there's a lot of games, so yeah, there might be some minutes in for me as well. This month, yeah, we will see. Roy, that was quite a battle, wasn't it? Are you happy with the point? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Of course, it was. we knew this was going to be a very tough game for us. I mean, obviously, due to the Watford situation, one... Secondly, due to the fact that you know we, we, we spent so much energy on Tuesday night getting that victory, this this game was always going to be a a tough one against a, a rival that you know we always have a battle with. So I'm absolutely delighted the way the players were up for that battle and stayed in the battle. Um, 
and that we've come away with a point which makes it a really not not the perfect week that would have been nine points mm. but I think if you'd have said to me before the week started seven points I think I'd have snapped your hand off for that one yeah understandable you made a change at half time with Jeffrey leaving the field um, how is he don't know yet I mean it's like all these muscle injuries have to be assessed and the doctors won't give you any idea at the moment of the extent of it but it is an injury and it was forced upon us so we we were obliged to put Gilo in and I thought he did exceptionally well considering he hasn't really played often in that position. He certainly hasn't played many games for us. So to come in in the second half and play against a, a, a Watford team that played the ball forward quickly and play with wingers who always trying to beat you one against one, I thought he, he stood up to it very well. And we were fortunate that that happened because we really have been so unlucky that you know we knew at the start of the season we don't want injuries at right and left back. Uh, because we need Ward and Patrick Van Arnholt there all the time. We didn't get that. And then, of course, the one of the players who's going to replace them, mm. Schlup, he gets injured too. So we're covered for injuries in certain places, but not at fullback. Particularly impressive, then, if you think the week that you've just had with those seven points in three games with so many personnel changes. It says a lot about the, the strength of character and quality in the squad. Yep, I agree. Strength of character in particular I think I think the, the lads really you know we weren't particularly delighted with our first half performance we thought we could do better than that we thought we needed to show more aggression and you know more determination even than we've done and because uh, we knew the second half would be perhaps if anything even tougher for us than the first half and luckily we got that and the, and the players who came on MacArthur and Ben Teke, they did their bit as well so in that respect, it was very much a, a team and a squad victory. And now we've got a few days and we're going to need those days to recover, first of all, because uh, there's some very, very fatigued players in there. And that was obvious, I thought, towards the end of the game in some of the decisions that people were making. You know, they, they were running on empty, really. And when you do that, then sometimes you don't have the composure that you would like to make the right decisions. But the good thing is we... We came away, nil-nil, really good result here at Watford. And now we've got eight or nine days to prepare the Brighton game. Well, I think on behalf of everyone at Crystal Palace, good luck for that game, which will actually be your 100th game in charge of Palace. So all the more reason to uh, hopefully celebrate with a win at Brighton. Absolutely. We'll be doing our best. Everybody knows that, I think. So there you have it. Now you've heard what Roy Hodgson, Gary Cahill and Jar Reedwald had to say after the game. That concludes this week's podcast for the game against Watford. But make sure to come back next week for my post-match review of the game against Brighton. So thanks for listening and remember to up the palace. I guess I'm not